Uh, We've been looking at the book of Philippians. We're in the middle of the third chapter, and I've titled today's sermon, Finding Joy in the Race. Uh, Initially, I thought I would entitle it, Finding Joy in the Journey, Uh, but this Christian life that we live, I think, is more like a race than a journey. You see, it's hard sometimes I think one of the problems that the church has had over the centuries, certainly in my lifetime, is that we've focused too much on the end of the race, on the pie in the sky when you die by and by, oh my. But I think it's important that we understand that there is joy to be found in the midst of this Christian life. And I think the Apostle Paul addresses this in this short passage from Philippians 3. Uh, This is one of my favorite passages. If you've ever received a letter from me or if you've got the pastor's blast and you've looked at my signature line, the verse pressing on towards the goal comes right in the middle of this. This is a little different translation, uh, but I like this one a lot. So I want to look at what is required to win the race. Now, when I was in high school and college, I was a bit of an athlete. I know I don't look much like that now. But I tried just about every sport except football because I was only about this big. But I, one that I really didn't like was running track. I hated running track because you just had to run. At least with basketball and soccer, my two preferred, preferred sports, you could chase a ball around. When you're running track, you just run. And I hated it. Well, okay, I still hate it. But when I was a kid, I had real bad allergies. And when they, you know, they make us just go out and do like a five mile run. And it wasn't long before my nose was burning and my throat was burning and my lungs were burning. And I lasted about three weeks on the track team and I was done with track forever. You see, if we want to win, If we want to get to the end of the race where there's pie in the sky by and by, it requires preparation. If you want to be a good track runner, you got to go out and run miles and miles and miles, which I wasn't willing to do. One time, uh, one of the kids on the soccer team put on a pedometer so that we could see how far we ran in an average soccer practice. We ran 8.2 miles in one practice. But that was okay because we were chasing the ball around. It was more fun. Either way, though, in order to do that sport well, you have to be prepared. You have to practice. And there are four things, I think, that Paul tells us in this passage that preparation requires. You ready? First, preparation requires dissatisfaction you got to be a little dissatisfied with where you are. Look what Paul says. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. I'm not there yet. Here's the Apostle Paul, probably one of the greatest Christians of all time, saying, you know, I just haven't quite figured this out yet. How many here have it all figured out? They've done everything exactly the way they think God wants them to, and they're really happy with how things are going. Yeah, me neither. We have to be a little dissatisfied with the way things are to motivate us to be more prepared. And I think one thing that we need to, that this helps us understand is it helps us understand what Christ did for us. When we understand what Christ did for us, it's easy to see how we might be a little dissatisfied with where we are. Paul says, I'm well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross, which we will remember in a bit with this communion feast, is so incredibly overwhelming that I don't know quite how we could match up to that love. And I think if we look at who we are and where we are, It's okay to be a little dissatisfied because that motivates us to press on toward the goal. Preparation requires a little bit of dissatisfaction so that we can understand what Christ did for us. 
Secondly, Paul tells us that preparation requires direction. We've got to have some direction if we're to be prepared. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. We need some direction in our faith. We have to kind of know where we're going. And it's not just about the pie in the sky when you die by and by, oh my. There's some joy to be had in the midst of this Christian life. And if we're to be well prepared so that we can get to that goal in the end, we need to have direction. We need to know where we're going. We need to have thought about it a little bit. And when we think about it a little bit, we'll begin to understand what Christ wants for us. Paul says, I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. I've got a direction that I want to go, and I'm going there. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to get sidetracked a little bit. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be a lemonade stand on the racetrack that I'll stop at every once in a while. But I've got a direction. I've got a goal. Because I know what Christ wants for me. We've got to be a little dissatisfied. We've got to have direction. And thirdly, preparation requires determination. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. We've got to be a little determined. We need to not be quite so laissez-faire about our faith. We've got to understand what Christ has done for us, and we've got to be determined to accept and to fill the challenge. You see, we need to be determined because we understand what Christ will do for us. We understand what Christ will do for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. You know, some folks, it takes almost their entire life before they see clearly what Christ did for them and start to focus. Some folks, it takes well into their 70s or 80s or 90s before they figure it out. And that's okay. But if you are determined, if you understand that there's a goal, pretty soon you'll begin to see what Christ will do for you. And you'll begin to figure it out. Paul says you may not have it figured out just yet, but pretty soon you will if you focus. To be prepared to win the race, we have to be a little dissatisfied. We have to have some direction. We have to have determination. And finally, Paul tells us that preparation requires discipline. Look at what he says. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. We got to be disciplined and stay on the right track we got to focus a little bit and understand that there's going to be things out there that are going to tempt us to find a different way. But we got to be disciplined. Now, last year about this time, much to my wife's chagrin, I decided to do the no-carb diet thing. Boy, that required discipline. Couldn't have any beer. It was really a bummer. But I lost 25 pounds. It required a lot of discipline, but I met a goal. Because when we begin to be disciplined, we begin to understand what Christ has for us. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians. You realize, don't you, that you're a temple of God, and God himself is present in you. God has chosen amongst all the places in the entire universe that He might dwell to dwell within us. His chosen living place is within us. We are God's temple. And so I think we need to be a little bit disciplined. 
yeah, you know, sometimes you need to lose a few pounds. Sometimes you need to walk around the block a little bit so that you stay healthy. Sometimes you need to focus your mind on what Christ wants you to do so that you can be disciplined in serving Him. Now, before you sit there with a scowl on your face saying, boy, that sounds like a whole lot of hard work, there's joy to be found in the preparation. There's joy to be found in the dissatisfaction with who we are because we're going to improve ourselves. We're going to make ourselves better because of who Christ calls us to be. There's joy to be found in the direction because once we have a purpose, we can be joyful in knowing that we're getting there. There's joy to be found in the determination of doing it well. Once we find the gift that God has given us and we use it to serve one another, there's joy to be found in that. And finally, once we discover that when we're a little bit disciplined, things will go a little better for us, there's joy to be found in that. Now last week, when we were looking at the difference between works righteousness and faith righteousness, we understood that Paul was telling us we need to have some new values. We need to not be focused on making sure we do everything right because God already did everything right for us. We need to value what God did for us. Today, I think Paul is telling us that if we're to do this Christianity thing right, we need to have a new vigor. We need to be ready to do some things. We need to be ready to get involved and to, to get out of our pew and get off of our so sofa and to find some place to serve Him, because when we do, we'll discover joy. Uh, Christianity, folks, is not a spectator sport. It's a race that we all have to run, and it's not easy a lot of the time. But we'll discover, when we actually get out there and do something, there's joy to be found in the midst of the race, not just at the end.